I want to talk about I2C and RTC. This is a protocol. We will define what is the protocol and what we will do with it. And this is a real time clock. Real time clock. Now what is real-time clock? Real-time clock, for example, is like this chip here. We have a real-time clock, I2C DS1307. What this model can do, this is actually like, exactly like the clock that you wear on your hand, but it doesn't have anything but electronics and the electronics is back up with a backup battery that we can see here that means that if we will uh, as long as the battery is in the holder it will remember the time and uh, work uh, and uh, not a problem for uh, forgetting the time if we will disconnect the battery it will forget the time now what we can do with this? For example, we can do the following. Let's see on uh, the RTC project that I did. Let's see for a second what it is. This time clock model, which is here, which uses a chip DS1307 and you can see the time now it's 10 o'clock 49 and 17 seconds and if I will disconnect the power and we will wait a little it was about uh, 17 seconds now I think about one minute past and we can see that the time is continued to run. This is because the RTC model uses a backup battery, which is a little lithium battery CR. 2032 a very common and usual lithium battery okay. okay so what did we see now we saw that I, I'm using this model with Arduino Uno and LCD display and I can show the time on the LCD display now how this is done okay let's see so we have our RTC model module and we have Arduino Uno Uno board and actually they are talking with each other using the I2C protocol. Also, I am displaying it on an LCD. Okay, so how does these two models communicate between each other? Okay, so let's talk about a little about the I2C. So this is a protocol. The protocol is defining how uh, they are talking uh, with each other. So this protocol uses two lines, which are SDA, which is the data, and SCL, which is the clock. We have a clock and we have a data. So now we know 
that these are actually two lines or we can say that there are three lines because we also have to connect ground between them in order that the protocol will work now the protocol is open collector or open drain now let's see what is open collector and open drain so open collector is get something uh, from here and this is going out of the chip this is the open collector because this is bip bipolar transistor which is has open collector this means that in order a that this will work we have to connect a pull-up resistor we also have an open drain open drain is the same but for MOSFET so let's say that this is a kind of MOSFET and same as before we have the open drain so the problem is that it is open so if it is open and the logic here should be high so instead of high or 5 volt it will be high Z what is high Z? high Z means that this, uh, this net is disconnected from anything So if the net is disconnected, of course, this is not a good idea because if we have the open collector, so we should connect a pull-up resistor to VCC. Why is that? This is because this transistor can be connected to the ground and uh, take care of the zero but it can take care of the one or the logic high without the pull-up resistor so this protocol defines that we use resistor somewhere to the SDA and SCA lines now how the protocol works first the protocol is working till 128 uh, units this means that if we have the lines that we talk, which are the SDA and SEL, we can connect this line to several components that are using the protocol I2C. Okay, so we can connect up to 100. 28 components so of course in order that this will work we have to mark each of this component so each component will be marked with a specific address and also the protocol is defining that one of them will be the master and all the other will be slaves slave also all the other will be slaves why should they be slaves because one of them should take care what is happening and the other just responds the master should uh, for example take care of the clock and produce the clock it will also start the sequence which is going from high to low and after the, this will be also the start bit and after the start bit it will uh, try to communicate with a specific address 
which is one of the components that we're using. So each component in I2C have a specific address and how this is work. So the SDA of the master is started high, also the SCL, logic high. When the master start, this will be the start bit, start bit, start bit. It will also later produce the clock. So uh, the SDA uh, will send an address and after after it is done by the way it is 7 bit now the slave this is the master so the slave will take the SDA and pull it back to zero which is acknowledge the acknowledge is telling the master hey I got you and now uh, Let's continue. So uh, now let's see a few things about uh, the speed of the I squared C. Okay, so when it was invented, the speed was only 100 kilohertz, and over the years, the speed is higher and higher and higher. And as for 2012 it is 5 megahertz is ultra fast mode okay so we can see here what I explained we have two pull up resistor we have the master and we have the slaves and the master is taking care of the bus and producing the start bit after the start bit uh, there is a communication between uh, the models and uh, and the, uh, the slave as I said uh, have to give a knowledge bit when it uh, got uh, that data okay so this is basically all the communication this is how uh, I built the clock I will put later data on it and uh, ah, also uh, something interesting in the board let's see the board that I said it has also a, not just the RTC clock basically there are two chips one of them is the clock and the other is I2C EEPROM which can be used to store memory Okay, so we have also 32 additional K memory, which we can see here. So basically the address of the memory and the address of the clock should be of course different. So each of them have a specific address. So where do we find the address of this part? So we need actually to open the datasheet and somewhere in the data sheet we will find the address and uh, also in this RTC module we can see that in different addresses we have different data we have in address 00, zero the second and then the minutes and then the hours and the day date months year and other functions that we, we can use uh, about the address of this component so uh, basically we should search for the address let's search for it and we will find the address of this component okay RTC address okay so the RTC register located in address 0 to 07 location 
in the ROM space. And we can also see the sequence of writing. And in the sequence, usually the address also appear. Uh, ah, also, we can see that while we're writing the word, we have a bit for read and a bit for write. So the same address with zero at the end will be to write data. The same address with one at the end will be to read data. Here we can see the knowledge that come uh, after all the bits passed. Okay, about address. Okay, here is the slave address. We can see now the address. Okay, so this is the address uh, for doing a write, which is 11010000. This will be to do a write. You can see that await a slave receiver. And the same address as I explained will be with one at the end to do the read sequence. And after it, we have all the data. The data, as I said, is the seconds, minutes, hour, a day, months, and a year. Okay, so this is for now. Thanks.